Well, I'm back with some Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's been half a year since I've touched this game, and I don't know where the time went, because I, I understand I spent like the first half of the year playing Witcher 3, and I guess that kind of had time go by. There's a bear down there. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe it's been half a year since I last played this. I literally booted this up and I was like, December 25th at 4 p.m. you last played this game. I was like, ha, huh. okay, I last played this game on Christmas and now it's mid-June. Weird. Because I still vividly remember this game. It still doesn't feel that long ago, hey dead guy, that uh, I last played this and it is starting to rain. So yes, uh, I'm just playing this for funsies. I'm just want I I've just been I've been in a mood to play this game again for no exact reason. It's just a good game. I I really enjoyed Funny enough, I said this a few times in the past, but Valhalla is probably my favorite game that I played last year that I didn't really do a whole lot of with the channel on with the channel and such, because I only did three parts last year of it, and that was just me kind of messing around, doing some side story stuff, and uh, having fun, because I, I do enjoy this game. It is ridiculous. It is much more of a Viking game than it is an Assassin's Creed game. And uh, if my voice seems like it's giving out on occasion, it's because I've had a very long day at work today, so I'm very uh, tired. Don't even get me started on uh, the hours of driving I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, today's gonna be a bit more low key, and uh, just having some fun with this, I guess. Just more uh, impromptu, fun, random, whatever. I, I want to play an open world adventure game again. That that's the thing. Is that I I I'll get back to The Witcher Three when I do, because I still have the DLC to do with that game. But I just want to take a step back and get back to another game I really, really enjoyed that I just kind of sidelined. I didn't... I completely forgot I even dropped this game, to be honest. I remember kind of dropping it around... Yeah, I last played this on Christmas, so... I dropped it on Christmas, but like the weeks before Christmas, because I got this in mid-December, and I got about 50 hours of gameplay in this in about two weeks, which for me is ludicrously insane. Put that in perspective, my, the entire playthrough of Witcher 3 on the channel is 64 hours. So, cut like three or four parts out of that and you have about as much time as I spent on this game as I did that. Because uh, I actually, for me, a make or break with the recent Assassin's Creed games. Like, I played Origins, I didn't find it very interesting. I played Odyssey, I thought the Ge geography and location was very interesting. I didn't find the story or the characters interesting. With this game, I find both interesting. I like Eivor as a character. He's, uh... I don't know, I like his character in a, quite an amount. I like the Mercian geography. I, I like the medieval 800 AD Europe of, uh, the UK and such, and it's very nice. I like going to... Norway here as well, and Asgard, and apparently from I, I also what's been happening this past week is I've been on I've been watching E3 as well, which is kind of nice to do and chill out while I uh, stress about work and get tired like I am right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I was surprised and I'm happy to actually see how well this game kind of did compared to the other recent Assassin's Creeds. They they said this is the best Assassin's Creed in. They're in Ubisoft's record books, I guess. Which, for me, I don't really care if this was good or not. For me, the fact that I'm like, okay, good. People are playing a pretty good game, I guess. Because I enjoy this, just because I do. But uh, what I was surprised about seeing on E3 is that they're adding more DLC to this. There was a DLC pop-up when I ups uh, updated the game before I started, and it was some raiding update or something. I already had the Christmas festival update last time I played this, and I showed that off quite a bit, and did some of the festivities and everything, and it's it was neat. That's not here anymore. I've already been at Ravensthorpe, and it was gone. 
It's kind of weird seeing it gone. But, uh... Yeah, I, the main thing that I'm surprised about is it they're giving this game almost a Blood and Wine-esque DLC. If you're seeing, like, this kind of screen-tearing shimmering that I am, like that, on some of the grass on occasion, that is actually the game. That's not my television, that's not OBS, that's nothing. That That is, the game's doing that. I don't know why it's doing that. It's... I'm also playing this on my new TV that I got around Christmas and such, so I'm seeing this game at a higher quality than when I was last playing it, but... Yeah, I'm seeing a kind of a screen terry ish thing going on here. But, uh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. For, for me. I could see easily for someone else who gets nitpicky, this being kind of annoying. But, uh, and, and at the same time, this game, it's its an Assassin's Creed game. It's going to be glitchy. It's going to be very glitchy. I've already seen an, an amount of glitches. But there, let me get to the point, because I tend to do this. I talk about something, I bring it up, and then I sidetrack on other things, because I want to talk about that first. So they're adding in a Blood and Wine-esque expansion of Paris to this game. We already have London in the base game here, and I've already shown off London. What the hell is that in the distance? What is that? Look at that. Talk about glitches. <laughs> is that the white frost from The Witcher 3 seeping into this world? Is it Ted Dedic? Is it Ted Dedic? Are we at the end of the world? Are we at Ragnarug? Oh, I can tell my voice is fucked up if I sound like that. <clears throat> Ragnarug. The voice cracking all over the place, man. I had to do so much talking today. Anyway. Yeah, so we're here. I don't know exactly... Oh, yeah, I remember why we're here. So, in the description for this video, I have... There's a link to a silent gameplay, I think about two hours, of me first playing this game again since Christmas, when I last stopped playing this game, when I last played it. Uh, from yesterday, for me. I, I did that yesterday. I just wanted to boot it up, do do a few hours of stuff on my own, get reacquainted with the combat system. The first half hour of that video is going to be a lot of me just messing about with the control schemes because I had to... This is... Unlike Ghost of Tsushima or Witcher 3, where I can kind of just jump in and play it pretty fast, this one is a little bit more jank and complicated with the control scheme with having to shield and like what 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 did the buttons here do and such and what even is this oh wait use horn neat anyway yeah i've had to get are you acquainted with the control scheme hey horse yeah i called you i forgot about that already so if you want to see just some putzing around, I did a few raids, I did a few solo raids of myself getting some gear and such in this vicinity. And it kind of just ends where we started back there on top of that platform. So, yeah. I kind of prepped today to... Eivor, stop jumping! I kind of prepped today to... Take a look at what's going on at this castle, because there is a skill book here. And I kind of want it. So I don't know if this is good guy territory, bad guy territory. We got some, I think, Saxon insignias on these flags, so... No, this is a restricted area. Lovely. Oh, crap. Well, he was right there. Sucks for him. And yeah, the, the whole work thing is exactly the reason why... ...there hasn't been a whole lot of videos in the past, uh, this is the first one of the month, I think. First one of June, and it's... ...when this goes up, it'll be, like... June 16th or 17th or something. I have no idea when this is going up. I've actually recorded... 
before this video, there's going to be a Pokemon Stadium 2 video. That I recorded like the first week of this month and I just haven't gotten around to doing anything with it. So, uh... Can I assassinate this guy, please? Fine, I'll use an arrow. I wanted to jump at him, but the game was like, no, you don't get a prompt to do that. Eivor, step out of the fire. So yeah, the, I, I've been behind on stuff, in kind of intentionally, and kind of just relaxing. Uh, this isn't a, this isn't a real job or anything, so it's not a priority. <laughs> it's fun. It's very fun, but uh, I have more important things in real life. The majesty of reality. Then. Uh, Playing Mario 64 at the moment, which I'm kind of curious when I'll get back to myself. Probably soonish. I do want to finish Pokemon Snap. Still, I've said that the whole time I've been playing it, but I do mean that. I do intend to beat it, and when I mean beat it, I mean, like, get the legendary Pokemon level, and then vamoose, then I'm out of there. <laughs> I know that there's post-game stuff. I don't care about any post-game stuff. This is going to be fast. Got him. It's This game is a little weird because it's so much not an Assassin's Creed game, yet you still, unlike Black Flag, where you just go pirating and don't give a single crap about stealth aside from like four missions this game does kind of have a Metal Gear-esque thing where you do you it the game doesn't force you the game doesn't force you into using stealth but it's extremely smart to use it it is very smart to use it to your advantage I don't have to do the stealth thing that I'm doing right now I could just go in go Duke Nukem on all their asses and probably die, and that's the reason why I'm doing stealth stuff, is that I know that I need to play it smart here. Okay, they got a turret thing over here. That dude didn't even notice me. What is that? There's something in the bushes there. Like, you see that? Flash is red for like a brief moment. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I like how we instantly he's just hiding. Got him. Got him. Alright, so far so good. Try to get that sniper up there. This thing keeps wanting to reset itself. Got him. Got him somehow. <laughs> Okay, that guy is either eating or investigating. He's investigating. Eating or investigating. Eating or investigating. What is he doing? What is he doing? Going up the stairs to meet an untimely fate. Stabbed in the back. Squished like a grape. Aw, uh, did Jimmy owe you five bucks? Now he owes you ten.
Can he make the long shot? From down half center court. Oh, and he hits the railing. He hits it and it goes in. The Vikings win the world tournament. All right, I should uh, sabotage this. Yes, that is what I'm here to do. Oh, it's a bomb. Is it going to blow up if someone touches it, or is it going to blow up on its own? We'll never know, but someone will, if they touch it, <laughs> find out. All right, what do we got here? Oh, no, 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 Diffuse. Diffuse the situation. I wanted to do my weird Mountain Dew Cool Blue Pulse Energy thing. Okay, so we got guys over there. Man, if I could hit that guy. <laughs> oh no, I don't want him to see me. I don't know what noise I just made there. It's a new language. It's the language of Gingledoof. Alright, so is there any... I'm gonna sabotage this one. I think it's if any of them touch those, they blow up. Pop goes the weasel. Avor's homeboys, any treasure? No. How dare you? I feel disrespected and no party being thrown. I've been away on an adventure for six months. I don't know what like half animation he did there of like him turning for a second. It was like a one frame thing, but I saw that and it was amazing. That's my Eivor impression. I've been away on an adventure for six months. How are you doing, my brothers? Let's go a Vikinger. Yeah, I, I actually do like Eivor for his character. He's an interesting character. Mo He's the most interesting Assassin's Creed character I've seen and played as since Edward Kenway, honestly. Edward's still better. I like Edward more. Honestly, I do like Connor more as well. Probably due to nostalgia at this point, because that game's a decade old. But, uh... And it was my first Assassin's Creed, but... I do like Eivor. He, he, rem he reminds me of, uh... I don't know who he reminds me of. He reminds me of somebody. I don't know who. I'll probably remember, like, two hours after this or something and be like, Oh, that's who. Okay, can I stick the shot? Yeah, not exactly the shot I wanted, but it still killed him. There's a guy in there, I think. <laughs> no? Who is it? Nobody. Not even the goddamn UPS man delivering my Amazon order. What's what's with the what's with the white light? What's with the what's this? You see that up in the top? What is that? What is it? It's circling the screen now. Avor, stop you stop using Jeopardy magic. Stop stop summoning the magic of Jeopardy. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm just saying... Saying things. Alright, let's go into, go into the basement. And, uh... Find the sewer system and begin Ghostbusters 2. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take it on. Where? Oh, you're here! I thought you were behind that wall. 
Well, we're going Duke Nukem now. Stop him! Yeah! I forgot I could do that. I like how everybody over there didn't give a shit. Like, oh, you, you, you see Bertrand over there fighting that Viking. Yes? Should we go help him? You, you know, you know, Timothy, I am on, uh, I got five more minutes on my watch duty. And then I get to clock out. I kind of want to go home and eat my mac and cheese. Can you just give me this day to do that? Maybe tomorrow we can help him. What's with the Matrix thing going on here? How did that not kill him? That was obvious why it didn't kill him. Okay, it seems most everybody in this area is dead. Which is good, because then I don't have to worry. And I won't be sneak attacked. I won't be surprised. Alright, there's a guy coming up the staircase, actually, I think. Over here. Where's he going? Where does this lead? Who are you? What's your favorite color? Surprise, penis! I'm sorry, son. You did not get the McDonald's toy you wanted. Must be blocked from the other side. Great! You see, kids, this is what happens to you when you eat McDonald's. You become the ketchup sauce. Oh, no, no. No. Hush. Go back to sleep. Go back to the void from whence you came. Return to the ether of nothing. You were nothing, now become nothing again. Jacobson's gonna take the shot. He's got a perfect lead. It's a very slight wind. It's about 30 degrees out. That might affect the ang angulature by the slightest amount. And release. Oh, and he's just made the Olympics. He's just made the bloody Olympics, everybody. Congratulations. All right, so got someone down there. Is there anybody in this tower? I don't think so. Give me the food. I can't collect the food. I can't collect ammo. Right in the neck. We haven't even gotten to the- that's the thing, is like when you're doing this smart and stealthily, you can be in a fortress like this for a while. <laughs> oh, I like this scenario. They're both sitting on the bench together. Hey Carl, you see E3 last night? Yeah, Jimmy. Everybody's just Carl, Jimmy, Timothy, and, uh, what's a stupid name? I can't think of a stupid name. Uh, what's a generic name? Steve. Steve is a super generic name. Hey, Steve. You watched E3 last night? Yeah, Tim. It was rather lame. Capcom didn't show anything new. They just showed us a bunch of their old game plans. Yeah, man. I think Nintendo's going to do the best. They always bring the best. Steve! What'd you do? Oh, I feel sick. Oh, it's the E3 stank. 
Then Devolver Digital comes in with the kill! That is E3, ladies and gentlemen. Applause. I, I don't have uh, I don't have a soundboard or anything. I'm not fancy like that. I don't. I, I, to be honest, I find them very tacky. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just a roar of an applause. E3 in a nutshell, 2021. You know, I had a very stupid question, probably a month ago at this point, on Discord to a few people in my half-insomniac state, deep into the morning. I asked the question, uh, why do we call... why do we say things like 1901 or 1905 for the beginning of the 20th century? We, we do that. You say 1901, 1908, 1909. You don't do that with the 2000s for some reason. You say 2001 or 01. You, you don't say 2001. You don't say 2005 or 2007. You say 2007. Why, why have we just... What, what happened in the... Just user slang or grammar where we decided not to say 2001 or 2002. It has to be 2001 or 2002. 1908. 1903. You see how lame that sounds? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I thought of that in a very sleepy insomniac state like a month ago. <laughs> and, uh, yeah... Yeah, I don't know. It amuses me. It amuses me how we didn't, uh, how we settled on things like that. Is there anybody still alive in this place? Is there anybody? Are there any challenges left? Or have I defeated and conquered this castle? Uh, the drawbridge is down too, so I can get over there. Which is where the book actually is. Wait a minute. What was that? Oh, I was gonna say, I saw something. There's somebody, for some reason, is that guy the only one in that building? Why is he the only one highlighted there? That has to be an issue with the range of the pulse. The pulsating eagle vision. Under a moonlit sky, in a pulsating eagle's eyeball, you can see further than the average human. You are gifted, Eivor. With the strength of a bear and the weight of a thousand suns, you shall conquer Mercia and bring peace to the Lilat system once again. All right, let's kick this door in. No? Aw, oh, man, is this a story progression beat thing? Is this a story thing? Wait. I see a hatch. I was gonna say, that would be super... Mm, that'd be super lame. Mm, that would be super lame. Mm. Oh, I, I, Eivor almost got in a prep position to jump onto that thing like that. Come on, dude. Oh, come on, you had it. He actually let go there for some reason. I did not push any buttons to do that. Okay. Can you jump backwards? I don't know if there's like a specific button command. Mm. No, Eivor, jump backwards. No, Eivor, jump backwards. Come on! There you go, but you suck. I'm gonna have to do this the old way, aren't I? If the old way works... It, it seems to be working so far. I'm kinda nervous. It's... I'm nervous the game is just gonna say no. It doesn't seem to be saying no so far. Okay, we're up and at him. This 
Still can't get in is maybe well the castle has things in it, so it has to have something inside it. There has to be an interior structure. Although I'm starting to doubt whether or not I will be able to get access to that because the front door was closed. And all these seem to be fake. Who installs fake doors on their houses? Everyone in Novigrad is the answer. Who were you talking to, dude? There's no one Oh, 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 shit, there is someone! I forgot how to, like, charge and run at somebody. How do I do that again? Uh... Okay, whatever that was. Yeah, no. I blew the cover way too easy. I'm gonna get rid of this archer. Because he is gonna get in the way. This is it. Got him! Gotta mash those buttons to punch. Okay, you guys were having a little feast up here. What were you eating? Got some apples, some wine, something's cooking in the pot, some bread, carrots, cabbage. Is that a croissant? Is that a croissant? You guys, <laughs> I guess you guys hate eggplants or something, because there's a bunch of purple. Are they onions? I think they may be. I think they're supposed to be onions. They're all over the ground. No, it's bread. I thought that was a croissant. Croissant. Okay, there seems to be a way inside the castle, maybe. Okay, got a rune. Mm, hence why I said maybe, I don't think this is actually a way in. I think it's all sealed up. I think this is supposed to be a story beat of some type that I haven't done yet. Because this seems awfully elaborate, yet very tightly knit. Very tightly sealed. So where's that book supposed to be? I came here for the book. That wasn't the game, that was me. Yeah, this place, like, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of small areas. I don't see any entrances into the castle. So... I guess we're out of luck. Well, I know the book's here. Now where to go? I can do some missions, I guess. Some some side missions. I don't plan on doing any story missions today. Maybe in the future. Because I think I said in the first part of this way back when that 
I don't intend this to be a full playthrough on the channel, but more just kind of a weird, a weird showcase of me playing it and such, because you gotta understand that with games this big, I enjoy playing these. I just played through Pokemon Crystal recently for the Stadium 2 thing. These are long RPGs that would take forever. You, if you know anything, like, about me playing Witcher 3, that took five months to play through The Witcher 3. And that was me doing it really fast. But playing through a game silently versus commentating and having fun and narrating over it takes a bit more effort and uh, is a little more time consuming. Because I played 50 hours of this game on, mostly on my own. 95% of it was on my own. And... Uh, like, I'm still only maybe halfway through the story of this game. It's a long game. These games are all very long. It's kind of why I was scared of playing The Witcher 3 for so long. I put it off for two years. I've had the capability of doing it for two years. It's my favorite game. I put off doing it for two years because it's a commitment. It really is a big commitment. And uh, I've learned from someone a few years ago that... Uh, if you keep playing these big, open-world action-adventure, any mass- Say even like Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy IX I enjoy, Final Fantasy X I would actually like to play, but I'm never gonna get around to it, probably. Like, I, I played through it, but uh, for the channel, I don't think I'm ever gonna get around to it, just because it's such a big commitment. These are big games. And if you do- if you just play them constantly, even like in tandem with each other, it just, uh... It makes you start to hate doing what you're doing, because it's just so much. It is so demanding. Whereas if you're playing it on your own and having fun by yourself, yeah, it's still demanding, but it's a lot less of a commitment, and you're not thinking about it as much. It's just a little bit less of a weight on your mind. It's almost like making a television series in a weird way. It's like that viewpoint of like, you got it. It's, it's kind of why I'm disappointed that Oblivion hasn't kicked up again, and I just haven't been in the mood to play it, and I'd also have to rearrange some technical issues with it because it's on my 360. My 360 doesn't want to work with this capture card for some reason right now, and I'd have to move everything to my Xbox One, and I have done virtually very little to no testing on my Xbox One with this capture card, so I don't know how, to that, how any of that would handle, and I'm having to speed up my talking to get through all this really fast so it doesn't seem like I'm just rambling, even though I'm just rambling. But, uh... You can tell why my voice is tired right now as I'm, I'm I am doing this for a lot of the day <laughs> but uh, yeah it's just a lot it, it's a big commitment and if you start hating to do what you're doing then why are you doing it is that a bear no it's a deer I heard a grunt I was like oh oh god yogi So, with a game, my point is, with a game like this, that is the length of, say, Witcher 3, or Final Fantasy 7, or Skyrim, or any of these big adventure, not even just, like, open world action adventure things, just any big video game. There are very long and big video games that take months. They take many months to beat for some people. They take weeks, months, and if you're really procrastinating, maybe even years. So doing things like this... It's why I spread out Ghost of Tsushima. It really is why I spread out Ghost of Tsushima. It took me a while to finish that game. It took me... Like, four and a half-ish months to beat Ghost of Tsushima. I had to really think about that first thing. I was like, when did Ghost of Tsushima come out? It came out in July. And uh, that was because I wanted to spread it out, so I fully enjoyed it. Ghost of Tsushima was the best video game I played last year for me. For me personally. That was the best video game. Now the best- now the video game I had the most fun with would probably be this game, honestly. This is not as good as Ghost of Tsushima, by any means. It's because of things like what we're about to see here that I had more fun with this game. 
I have no idea what this is. Jammed. Need to get on the other side. It's a witch! Oh god, is this, uh, the candy house of the witch, uh, what's it? What's it? What's it called? Hansel and Gretel? Is this Hansel and Gretel? Because this game is stupid funny with its weird... So the story is... The story for this game is fantastic. It's a very well-written, good quality Assassin's Creed story. The side missions in this are some of the most batshit funny things I've seen in an open world game. And that is why it wins my heart of being more fun. I hear like another voice in there, but I don't see any like subtitles for it. It's very faint. <laughs> eh. Is there anything? Do I just have to break that lock there? I thought it said I needed a key. Come on, Abor, get inside. Find the key to unlock the door. Oh, oh, okay, I can break that from back here. Maybe. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, like, I'm hearing another voice coming from in there. Alright, what's going on in here? Are you in there? What's going on? Yeah, I'm hearing, like, another voice in there that I can't really understand. Oh, shut up, kid. I'm leaving. Have fun with your witch. Nah, we're gonna save the kid. I'm not that heartless. Well, maybe Eivor is. Okay, so we can't unlock that. What's in this room? Hmm. Alright, let's just open this and see what's going on with this kid. That's not the right one? That's not the right- I thought I grabbed the key. Oh. <laughs> that works. That's not the right key. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Well, we got our exit plan if we need it. I'm assuming the key's in there. So, Eivor, use your bow and uh, zoom in. How do we get in there? It's like solving... An adventure game puzzle. I feel like I'm playing King's Quest right now. That doesn't work. Let's examine this from the outside. Alright, so... There's also some... Yeah, that's gonna be... Yeah... 
it. Maybe from the roof? I'll praise you for having a very nice thatched roof, Miss Witch. I wonder if that's like a... ninth century euphemism for something. You have a very nice thatched roof, my lady. Seriously, what the heck do I do here? Wait. Also, I don't like how it's so, like, orangey-red in here. It makes things seem kind of weird. It's like, I'm expecting something weird or screwed up to happen now. Oh, what's this? Aha! Magic. Fooled you again, witch. I have solved your mystery. Watch it be like a fox, like that uh, one lady was keeping as a pet. It's not really a witch, it's just like a fox or something. <laughs> oh, the zany adventures of Eivor. Saving Mr. Dandy Doo Dandelion, the fox. It's another key. There we go, boys room key. What is this room? It's kind of weird, it just has a... Kind of like something I would expect to see in a church here. It's just a cup on a weird pedestal. Alright kid. Have you been a good boy for Santa? Here's your Christmas gift. About time! I've been so bored in here! Who's this witch that locked you in? A horrible old hag who wants to make me into rabbit stew! Thanks for helping me get out of here! What is that kid's animation? He's like spazzing. You naughty boy! This mess. The house has been upended. Who is this? I fooled him. I told him you were a witch and were going to eat me for supper. Well, that's a fine how do you do. It will take me weeks to put this place in order. <laughs> we had a grand time. I am no witch. I am the kindest, sweetest mum to ever lock a lad in a house. <laughs> how else teach you not to pick your nose? Lady. Stranger. I'm sorry, people. I don't speak Elvish. You you went from speaking the common tongue into speaking Elvish. So yeah, that mom is a bit overkill. She. Locked her son in his room, uh, because he picked his nose. What am I seeing up over there? What is all that nonsense? It's, uh, a lot of geometry that's kind of loaded and incomplete and weird. Ah, uh, yes, Assassin's Creed. The most quality, well-made, built-like-a-brick-shithouse video game ever made. All right, so is there another wacky adventure here? There is, actually. It's right up over there. Straight ahead of us in that ruin. It's probably another one of those Stella things. Whoa, foxes. Now I just want to play Ghost of Tsushima again. Damn it! I was actually debating whether I would continue go- Because I- there's still more stuff to do in Ghost of Tsushima. Mar make no mistake, I'm not done with Ghost of Tsushima either. The story's done, but there's still all the stuff with Sensei Ishikawa and Masako that we haven't done. So... Yeah, I'll return to those eventually as well. 
Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe someday. It's, it's, uh... Who in... The horse's ass is that? Dumbass. Cue the, uh, Monty Python dramatic running from a distance music. Instead of the guy actually getting... And instead of Lancelot actually getting there and killing the guard, it's the reverse. He didn't make it. But yeah, I intend to continue Ghost of Tsushima at some point. Eventually, just some fun, just like this, just some fun random wackiness with Ishikawa and Masakao. And, uh, have some, have some good old family-bound times. Jin Sakai, the family guy. Now on Fox. Uh, I actually feel like vomiting having said that. Mm. I hate how I just, like, did some... In, in, you don't understand. In my mind, I pictured, like, Ghost of Tsushima, but stylized like Family Guy, and that hurt me. That actively hurt me. I was like, why did my brain think of this? It hurts. Why? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do this? Why would you ruin such a fantastic property? Okay, so, yeah, it is exactly this. It's one of these things. So let me use the bird. If I can remember how to use the bird. Here, here is the bird. I barely remember how to use the bird. Okay, bird, can you use Odin's sight? I'm holding down the R3 button, and it's not pulsing, it's not doing its thing. Whatever. Hold on. Where the Nephilim place sacred stones to guard the chattel of God from other giants. Those present were scared by demons, and God defended the pious, sending the giants away. Only these holy reverberations remain. The work of good souls who have the earth in their heart will forever be tied to our ancestors and our Lord via this gateway. Eivor looks up, sees on the cliff, Brendan of Clefort, or whatever his name was. Brendan! What are you doing up there giving me hints from a distance? Ah! Uh, Squalala! And he runs away. I would not put this game behind doing shit like that. I wouldn't. After the weird things I've seen in this game, I would totally expect that. Absolutely. I would love it. I would love if they went weird, that weird with it. Brendan, stop it! Stop doing this! Oh, he's still going. Just leave him up there. He's doing it just to mess with Eivor now. Okay, so there's something. Okay, so how does this exactly work? I forget how these things... I, I know I need to line things up, but... My eyes, 
I give up already. I'm bored. <laughs> I'm gonna cop out. I'm just gonna be like, nope. I'm not in the mood to do a stone puzzle. I want wacky adventures, not rocks. If I want weird rock magic, I'd watch Jurassic Park. They bring... They, they, it's about dinosaurs. They bring back dinosaurs from the dead. That, that was the joke. <laughs> Alright, now's the time for the horse, I think. Imagine being such a jackass, you just blow your horn through the woods. The only other person I know who is that big of a jackass is Geralt. <laughs> As I did a lot in that playthrough. Ah, good times. Good times. Alright. Now, one thing that's better in this game than in The Witcher 3 is the horse. The horse is way better in this than I think in most video games. I like the horse in this game even more than the horses in Breath of the Wild. Just because the horse comes to you. It appears right next to you and is a useful utility. It is a vehicle. It's not supposed to be some, like living mind mindful thing of itself like it is in Witcher 3 and Breath of the Wild where the horse can be very obstinate and uh unlike what Aonuma said I I I I will forever love how Aonuma in like 2015 or 16 when the you can want you can climb that mountain in a distance uh when when that trailer dropped when they showed off Breath of the Wild for the first time the horse technology bit that they were going- that was a lot of their talk in that, was talking about the horse technology that they integrated into the game. And how the horse will never hit a tree. They constant- they said that like two or three times in that thing. And yeah, that is not a thing in the final game. It, you can run Epona or whatever horse you have into a tree. And the horse can die and the horse can mess up. Who is this joker? It is just how you imagine. Hello, stranger. Awkward silence. What is this place? Do you like it? My wife and I have constructed it from ancient stones. It is a house of dreams and memories, fashioned from gossamer and summer breezes. It's beautiful. Paula and I have traveled near and far. Oh, the things we've seen and done. Whimsy. When I say far, I mean to distant lands beyond your imagination. Each brick of this castle is a memory from our adventures. You have gathered wisdom from your travels. I have, and it is this. It is all very well to prepare for tomorrow. But do not forget today. Today, this hour, this moment is a precious gift. That's like the th that's that's not oh, wisdom. I that's like the the saying you, you would get on the inside of a Bazooka Joe gum pack. Of our travels. From our window, we can relive our adventures. There she is now. I must go to her. Thank you for your words, friend. Was that the mission? Was that... was that? <laughs> that was the sub-story? That was the dumbest one yet! We went to some guy's house and was like, hey, cool, cool, cool digs, bro. And he's like, I have wisdom from traveling the world. 
Don't live in the future. Live in the present. That is my wisdom. Where'd you get that? I saw it in the on the Sunday's Garfield. <laughs> I have the most dumbfound smile on my face. That was just fucking stupid. Like it was fine. Like I don't I don't hate that. It was just like wow, that was funny in just a really pointless way. Okay, this one we're gonna fast travel to because it's a bit away. Yeah, okay, so we saw some dude's house. I didn't even actually look at his house. I just was like, I went, Eivor did the cutscene, he was like, cool digs, bruh. And I was like, okay, I'm gone. See you later. Maybe I'll bring a housewarming gift. Run around in circles, run around in circles, run around in circles until you regain consciousness on the top of a tower. Overlooking. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. Nothing. Okay, I thought there was going to be bears and I was going to go, BEARS! But no. We don't get fun. There is no fun in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Why did I get this game? Why? Because it is a good game. It is the best game. Anyone who has ever played this game knows that. I don't know why I'm not doing that voice anymore. Ah, <laughs> oh, my head hurts. I have a headache. Doing that voice specifically started giving me a headache towards my eyes. Ah! Pain! Why am I in pain? Why must I suffer for your amusement? Oh yeah, earlier I brought up E3. Uh, so I've seen most of it. I haven't seen Limited Runs thing. Nintendo is tomorrow. That will date this, so... I'm curious whatever they have uh, coming up in whatever next video I do, I'll probably talk about it, but yeah. Uh, today was Capcom, and pretty much just Capcom, because who gives a shit about whatever 2K said? I didn't watch 2K, I watched Capcom. I don't think 2K said anything important because nobody was talking about that. <laughs> but uh, probably more GTA 5 stuff. But, yeah, Capcom was probably the least interesting because they just showed off stuff that we've already known about for months. And Resident Evil is already out, and Street Fighter V is already out. The Ace Attorney game we've known about for months. And what else did they show? Oh, Monster Hunter Stories 2. I don't care about Monster Hunter Stories 2. Cool for whoever does, but once again, that's a game we've known about for months. They showed nothing new. So it w I'd say Capcom's done the worst this E3 overall. Just nothing interesting. Very much just a commercial. This is the most... That was probably like the most commercial expo that I've seen in a while. A what are you guys talking about a brooch for? So yeah, Capcom was a uh, Capcom was a shot in the foot. Square was pretty pointless as well. They they at least showed some new some new things. That Final Fantasy Origins whatever thing that people are making chaos memes about and I don't understand why. I don't I didn't actually watch the trailer. I've seen screenshots of it and it looks very much like a it really looks like a video game that belongs in 2007 or 8. I'm going to straight out say that it really, really, really does look like a video game that belongs in 2007 or 8. It has the yellow-brown lighting, it has the edgy theming, and the costume designs look like they went to a damn old navy or something and are trying to make it look like modern fantasy stuff with an edge to it. That just reeks to me of, like, and even the, like, big Claymore sword the main character guy has looks really generic. 
It just seems pretty... It just seems like a game that belongs from 12 years ago. Something that would have came out around the early years of the PS3 and Xbox 360. It, to me, it looks like an Xbox 360 game. Not graphically, but thematically it looks like it. It looks like it was designed as one. Uh, maybe it's good. I have no idea. I'm probably not going to ever play it, but if it's good, then cool. And the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, I don't care about. That's a really... That, that's a nothing. They could have put... They could have done that and just put that out and pretty much have gotten the same fanfare of... Okay, they did that. Cool. A pixel... A pixel remaster is not, uh... Not a difficult thing for a company like Square to pull off or anything. If anything, I find it more interesting. They're selling them all each individually for whatever price. I'm assuming 10 bucks each. I'm gonna assume they're gonna be 10 bucks each. If they're more than that or less than that, I'll be surprised either way, but I'm betting 10 bucks each. Just knowing how Square works. Yes, we'll get to your brooch, my good sir. Uh, who else did stuff? Limited Run, I haven't seen. I think I said that already. Devolver was fine. They were about as crazy as they always are, and I had fun watching it. I did pre-order Demon Throttle, which was that physical-only game that they're publishing, which uh, I, I find a little weird them doing that in this day and age, but as someone who pretty much only collects physical copies, I find it to be not inconvenient and actually kind of nice, but I understand for a lot of people, especially people I know who really do just try to go digital only for just purely convenience to them. It doesn't seem like it's much of a money thing or anything. It's just, or even a space thing, because Switch cartridges are, even the cartridge itself is super small, but the actual copy cases are ridiculously thin. So it's not really, Switch games aren't really a space issue for most people. It's just a convenience thing. But uh, yeah. Oh, I picked up Demon Throttle. It'll prob I'll probably get it I I at the end of this year, I bet. Given the pre-order period is into October. Which I feel like a lot of people also didn't understand. They're like, well, you can only get this limited time thing for like a day, what bruh? Is no. No, they didn't they didn't listen. They're 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 talking on Twitter and Discord before they know anything. Ignorance is bliss, I guess, for for people's folly. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so that, it looks interesting. So I picked that up. What else was there? I'm trying to think. Oh, Microsoft. I, I, I was drawing a big blank. I was like, there's someone else there. Microsoft was yesterday with Bethesda. And we saw Towardson Howard. I don't know why I said that weird. Towards, ta Totterson Howard. Totterson. We saw Todson Howard, and uh, it was almost kind of nice to see him. It's a, he's a funnier character than we ever knew. It was just kind of nice to see Todd in his uh, lying schemes. It's like Peter Molyneux. It's like, well, Peter Molyneux is more like, uh, like the Dumbledore you don't ever want to see because he's weird. But uh, Todd, <laughs> how do you explain the weird weirdness around Todd? Uh... I don't think future generations are actually going to fully understand how we view Todd in the current age. Because it's it's kind of, uh... Well, he's a living meme, sure, but it's just a weird thing. It's like a charismatic in-joke of a living dude, and he kind of understands it himself to a degree. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's fun to see Todd. It's fun to joke about Todd. It's it's a wholesome thing to a degree, but it's also like, uh, you son of a bitch, you, you cheated us again, and I love you for it. It's that kind of atmosphere. It's like, you son of a bitch, you did it again. You cheated us. We hate you, but you're a sly, funny bastard. Uh, yeah, so we saw him, we saw Phil Spencer, and, uh, Microsoft's thing was fine. Halo looks interesting. I'm not that big of a Halo fan, but I have played Halo in the past. I haven't for well over a decade at this point. I've, I own Halo 4 and 5, and I've never played either of them. I've played through Halo 1 through 3, 
And I mainly enjoyed 3's online stuff. I played that multiplayer stuff with uh, friends. I didn't with Halo 1 or 2. But, uh... Yeah, so I'm curious if this Halo is going to be any good. I I didn't care about the other ones. I bought them, but I never played them. <laughs> and the new Fords, the new Fords actually kind of interest me because I I it's weird because I don't view myself as a fan of racing games, but I play enough of them to where you could probably say I like racing games. And yeah, they're fun to a degree. I just have to be in a mood for it. I like Sonic R for God's sakes. And, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested in Forza Horizon 5 with the Mexico theming and everything and the dynamic weather and whatever. But uh, there's a reason why I've never played Forza Horizon 4 on the channel, and that is because of the music. And the game is full of licensed music that would instantly become a Hindenburg. So, I don't know. I'll, I might buy Forza Horizon 5, maybe? Maybe? I would play it on my Xbox One. I don't plan on getting an Xbox Series X. In any time in the next, like, ten years, I would get a PS5 before an Xbox Series X, which... Yeah. So, I would I would get it for Xbox One and maybe play it for myself, but it's that's a very big maybe. Because Forza games rarely dip in price, and they're generally always, like, 40 to 60 bucks. And I'm kind of content with Forza 4 at the well, Forza H4 at the moment still. One of you swallowed it. Who was it? All right. I think I've talked enough about E3. Oh, and Everwild was shit can and then rebooted again after it became vaporware apparently, <laughs> which for me is funny because I pay a lot of attention to vaporware games like uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 and Skull and Bones. Wild, not ever wild, wild for the PS4 is apparently still in development at the studio in, I think it's, it's either Czechoslovakia, well, it's the Czech Republic, or, uh, I think it's France? It's somewhere, it's somewhere in Middle Europe. Middle Europe. There, there's a, it's a, if you don't know what wild for the PS4 is, Go on YouTube and type in Wild Sony PS4 and click on the first trailer you see. That thing was supposed to come out like half a decade ago and it's still in development apparently. The studio just put out an update on the game last year <laughs> and yet no one is talking about it. Everyone's forgotten about it and I love that about it. It's just this AAA Sony game that has been in dev hell for half a decade that nobody remembers. <laughs> so yeah. Everwild was announced in like 2017 or 18 or something and immediately became vaporware because nobody talked about it. Microsoft shut up about it. Rare shut up about it. And it just came out earlier today that they just, uh, Rare just said, hey, hey, they just quietly kind of says like, hey guys, uh, remember Everwild? Well, we canceled it and then we, well, we, we shit canned it and, uh, now we're start, we're restarting it from the ground up again, from the very beginning again. <laughs> So I'm curious what it's going to be if it actually comes out. Anyway. My brooch, my brooch. Yes, your brooch. Never get it back. Lose something? Polish the family brooch up for my niece, put it down for two seconds, and it's gone. One of the sheep must have swallowed it. That would be one hungry sheep. It was my grandmother's given her by a very wealthy, uh, admirer. How will I get it back without hurting any of my lovely sheep? One of you swallowed it. Who was it? We gotta make the sheep throw up. <laughs> you got any rat poison, dude? Tasty about a Small child playing with a toy. Cat, do you two know where I can get poison for the lambs? It's on the metal, sir. Lighting torches do so away from the sheep. Remember to feed the sheep from the hay bale. Give extra to Kelly. She's a hungry one. Kelly, she ate the brooch. And you know what that means, Professor M Mittens? You get the pets. The best pets. For you are the best cat. Cat's on the table. 
cat's in the food. There is nothing tasty about a brunch. My brooch! My brooch! My brooch! Can this guy shut up about his grandma's brooch? Mother tells me you wish to give me grandmother's brooch. Oh dear uncle, I shall treasure it as a keepsake. Your loving niece. You fucked up, son. You let your lamb eat it. And now you're suffering for it. Have you learned your lesson yet, son? Pained bar. <laughs> See what's there. By the gods. How do I find myself doing this? Dude, you you had what do you talk about, Eivor? You had to go up against a guy who claimed to be Legolas, but he was the shit Legolas. Literally, he was poopy Legolas in this game. Have you forgotten? You sticking your hand in a mound of Lamb diarrhea is not the least bit of your problems in your adventures. I've had no luck getting your brooch. A luck a day. No, nah, look through the poop, dude. Put your hand in the lamb poop. Nothing in there. It's gonna be this one way over here, isn't it? It ate a shoe. This lamb ate a person. Dude, I think you need to get away from these lambs. Uh, Not in very fine condition. The lamb's stomach acids are like lava. Here's your brooch. Woo! Ah, smell it knock over a horse. Just take it. It'll need a wash in, but my niece will be so grateful. Many thanks, stranger. I will not help in this way again. Degolus Legolus, the poopy smellagus. Off we go. Ah, zany adventures with Avon. Let's see what that is. You see, if this game, unlike Ghost of Tsushima, if I can play as a Viking in 800 AD and have a stupid mission where I look for a brooch in a pile of lamb shit, that makes it- that makes me happy. That puts us- I, I authentically smiled after that mission ended, so I know that this game is good. <laughs> it is stupid. It is so... redonkulous. It is so- I have to say that with more flair. It is inhorribly... redonkulous. And then the other half of the time, the game looks like Rohan, so it just itches that Lord of the Rings scratch that I have. I'm just like, yeah. Oh, my horses can swim now. That That's an update. I, I, I think that, yeah, it should be in the uh, silent gameplay in the description below. Click it. You will see me play a video game without me commentating. But, uh, yeah, horses can swim. What magic? It's magic. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, it's magic, you know, never believe it's not so. Sherwood Forest. That is a very fantasy looking bridge. There better be a troll or an ogre near it. 
My PS4 just screamed at me. I hate when it does that. I still don't exactly know what it does when it does that. Rest easy, friend. You will be avenged. Our bodies may be broken. Our pouches may be empty. But our souls will thrive. You will be remembered. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm doing a public service. I'm, I'm cleaning up the bodies. I'm disinfecting them. Do not worry. What happened who, who are you? An attack gone awry. We found more of Constantine's picts than expected. The rich have their numbers, both in coin and spears. My men were not ready, and we were overwhelmed. But I'm afraid it's not over. They know I still live. Hark! Kick tree enforcements! Hark! The spirit of my men are with me, and my spirit with theirs! Ah! Alright, this guy's straight up a furry. Okay. I guess we're helping him. We hey, bud. Oh, you, you want to throw stones. Okay. I got an axe. Nice stones, bruh. I love when these these numbskulls are getting hit. They're like, "Oh my nose! Look at this! Oh my nose! Oh!" All right, Wolfman, what's up? The threat is gone. What a fight! The picked King Constantine will feel a little lighter in the purse tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for your aid. Um, call me Abel. The name's Reacher. Reacher Sherwin. You know, we could use someone like you in our band of merry rogues and knaves. Is this guy Robin Hood? Rich get poorer, thanks to us. Oh, God, it's Robin Hood. Drop by sometime. Share an ale, maybe. Maybe. Well, until we meet again. I thought the Hark thing was a bit much. But yeah, this guy is just Robin Hood. That's bad, that's bad, that's really, really bad. Now I want to watch Shrek. I didn't get an ogre, but... I didn't get an ogre, but I did get Robin Hood. We met we met Shrek a while ago in the game, actually. Kinda. What I think is Shrek, because he was an ogreish man with a donkey. And there's another mission right here. Oh, you know why Robin Hood was here? Look at the name of the region. I'm holding my head in my hands right now. My god. Okay, Snottinghamshire. Snottingham, Snottingham. Yeah, it makes sense. You you cheeky bastards, Ubisoft, you you know what you were doing perfectly. You probably planned that very early on to do that. How difficult could this possibly be? Do not your arrow into the bowstring. Pull it back. Aim and fire. Oh wait, is this? This is Robin Hood. He's back. That was not good. Our friends will be remembered. The story continues. But now I need to plan for our next target. You lot can get back to training. Welcome, Lord, friends, to our next <laughs> I like how ha halfway through that combo they're like, Oh, welcome, friend. We see you now. So, we got... You run like a cow. Is it bad that when I see these two, instead of, uh, Little John, I see the Duke and Pipsqueak from Avatar? This is the Duke, and this is Pipsqueak. Who are you? You appear to be Obi-Wan, uh, you appear to be Luke Skywalker. And this guy... 
This guy is the dude on top of the ca the French castle in Monty Python who throws the cow. I fart in your general direction. All right, Robin, what's up? We borrow some coin from the ones who have plenty and give it to the ones who need them. We took silver from King Ale, jewels from Adelwood. I like to call it balancing the scale. Using shrubs for cover. Hastily scribbled note. More goods, more silver. The poor grow more desperate every day with the pick camps overflowing with their stolen silver and supplies. Any amount you can give might save a starving child. What are you... Are you pissing in this bush? Dude. Have some more modesty. I don't want to know what Robin's doing in those bushes. So what's the mission here? I don't even know anymore. Alright, what's an air This area is also advanced for me. I'm like a level 120 or something. So let's go to an area. Let us... Should we go to London? Should we go to London Town? Sure. Let's go to London. I'm I'm gonna do one of the missions here. One that I haven't done. Eivor coming at you. How long have I even actually been doing this? Only an at wow. Only an hour and a half, huh? Just a little under an hour and a half. It's felt like I've done this for already like two and a half hours for me. I am tired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm still reading Witcher Book 4. I've been procrastinating it. And I'll probably finish it up sometime in like the next week. It's been good. It's been very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to starting Book 5. Aside from that, with me... I have... I found some expired film for me to use in my photography, so that has gotten me very excited because expired photography is normally... Well, expired film can be expensive to acquire because it's more of an artisan thing than a, like, quality thing. So there, there's a premium to it <laughs> under normal circumstances. But uh, I just found these two in an old drawer, and I'm like, okay, these are like 15 years old, and I am curious to see what they're going to spit out at me. And what's going on with the screen? Oh my god, this whole time. I don't think it's affected much of anything, but look at this. You see the screen zooming in and out? That's because I still have the screen ratio set to Pokemon Stadium 2. So there you go. Now it's zoomed out a little bit more. So, this is the actual resolution of the game. There we go. Yeah, that's something that I don't think was that big of a deal, because that screen ratio was like... two millimeters shorter, so it's nothing. Anyway. We're in London. Again. There's a small child. Is this not the kid we saved at that lady's house? Oh, it's the Thousand Eyes thing. Yeah, I don't have my PlayStation Online at the moment. I literally, like an hour before I started, I yanked out the LAN cord and forgot to set up the Wi-Fi again for this thing. Because I had to do a lot of updating for a lot of games because I haven't played PlayStation in a couple months. So, hooking it up. Hardwiring it tends to speed up a download from being an hour to, like, ten minutes. <laughs> Alright, what do we got here in London? That. That's when I... That's what kind of caught my eye. 
You know, it's funny, I've been playing this for this long and I've barely done any combat. Okay, her clothes looked kind of weird to me. It almost kind of looked like two people merged together, so I had to do a double take. sunken treasure yeah the current's too strong to pull the rack out so we're left to lament the loss you interested i am a strong swimmer i fear no cold current or drinker of the deep then by all means we can scrape together a reward fit for the cargo's rescue okay what kind of what kind of reward i hope it's good it better be good you better not be cheating me. If you're cheating Eivor, you're gonna be... Deadvor. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's just in here, isn't it? This is like an incredibly Witcher 3 mission to do. Dive underwater and look for treasure. There is so much of this in Velen and Skellige. I don't see anything. Oh, it's over there. There's the ship. Yeah, I can see it now. Let us see if we can read that message. In case it is important for whatever we're doing here. If we actually can, that'd be nice. What do we got that? Compass keeps taking too healthy a share of my wares. Watch the bastard try and take my coin when they're stuffed inside a cow's stomach. Okay. A message in a bottle? Ah, wise. Hid a necklace in a cow's stomach. Guess you'll have to go fishing for the rest of the treasure. Okay, is there anything here? I don't really see anything.
What's the deal with this mission? Do I actually have to fish? <laughs> I like these avenge other like player account missions. They're dumb. Avenge PlayStation Abrupt Penguin. I don't know who Abrupt Penguin is, but okay, I'm not going to avenge you, my good sir. I am sorry. I don't know who you are, but if you died, you died a glorious death in battle as a Viking. Believe it. Alright, yeah, this mission isn't very fun. It's kind of a search and grab thing. It's a treasure hunt. Wow, I just called a treasure hunt a search and grab. Ah, yes, this is, uh... You watch the 3D movies, I use the stereoscope. You... You... You use a clock, my good sir. I use a chronometer. It's funny because there is a chron they use a, chr a chronometer is one of the main tools in Data Scene, which I played last December as well as this game, and I actually found out that a cr I didn't know if a chronometer was actually like a real device of any type, and it actually is a real type of clock. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just some funny, cool name that FromSoft came up with to call a clock. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Chronometers. If you want to be a real hipster, kids, call every clock you know, or see, or are told about. Call it a chronometer. That'll make you seem smart and obnoxious. You're stuck! What are you stuck in, my good sir? Uh, where is he? Hmm, is he in here? Anyone? I'm stuck. Oh, okay. Burr's <laughs> balls. That is foul. What? What? Anyone? I'm stuck! Yeah, and I think those jars are full of poop. Hey, dude. Just climb. Hey. I just wanted to drop in and say, You're a cool dude. Anyone? I hear you. What is wrong? Thank the gods! I wanted to get the new shipment done early, and accidentally boxed myself in. If that is all, I can get you out. Not so fast. Avoid breaking the jars. The sauce is delicious, but smells like a sun-soaked fish barge. What kind of sauce is it? Make a path through the jars so I can get out. And, and don't break any. I already smell broke one, dude. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to smell it. I mean, is this ruined now because I hit the stinky poo poo sauce? Can I just throw this at the public and create terror? Eat the majestic. What, what shall we call this? Eat Eivor's foul deeds! The sauce! One of them hates it, the others love it. 
<laughs> Look, even they're scared. Uh, it, they seem scared for a moment. Alright. No, they, they bailed. I guess they grew tired of it. Splatoon! You're a kid now. You're a squid now. Whatever the whatever the weird Splatoon music is. Oh crap! It kind of burst all over Eivor. Look at him. Okay, he cleaned up nicely. It, it just his skin is he is so fast at absorbing nutrients from whatever lands on his skin he just absorbed all of whatever that stuff is how much of this crap is there dude The Romans will cry at this. Maybe. That didn't exactly go the way I thought it would. Okay. I'm gonna run around. It's not worth it. No. Keep saying the same things over and over again, and I'm ruining these restaurateurs' day by giving them sauce they did not want. Eat the sauce! <laughs> Grab it, Eivor. Thank you. No, push it to the side. Push it to the side. Don't pull it. Put. Thank you. Oh my god, dude. Why? Why is there so much of this in here? Look at this. Look how many are in there. Why? Why are there so many in here? Is the sauce so good? You had to make, like... This guy seems like he's the type to like this stuff. Okay, we have some new victims. Look at the way it just, like, coats everything and absorbs it. It becomes... greasy. This is some sadistic this is this is the representation of some sadistic look at the ground look at this come on this is ridiculous even Avor just standing and it's now covered in it I was going to do some stupid joke about how some sadistic fuck doing this to the BTS McDonald's sauce that everyone wants to kill people over the same way they did years ago over the Szechuan sauce for Rick and Morty. Th this, this is, this is, Eivor's doing that. He's throwing the sauce from this limited edition McDonald's Happy Meal out into the streets to coat people with as an act of rebellion.
What happens if I just stand in this stuff? Yeah, you just kind of get coated in it, and then it goes away. I wonder if this guy's gonna comment on all the sauce that's just in the streets. The sauce in the streets. That sounds like a song made by some late 90s rock, generic rock band. The sauce in the streets. I don't know where I'm going with this. Now I'm just singing. When I shouldn't be, because my voice is as fried as a rat that electrocuted itself on wires. We're almost done. We're almost done with this ridiculousness. Man puking. <laughs> Is that supposed to be Avor in the subtitles there? Oh. I love how Avor just threw up. That was weird. What is this game? Thank the gods you've unblocked me. Oh, that was ridiculous. Just a few broken. But the smell will be here for weeks. Uh, still, you have my thanks. Stinky. The demon odor at the tithe. Yeah, I'd say it's a demon odor. It made Eivor vomit. Okay, is that the mission we're doing here in London then? Did we really just do- We ha what is this game, really? We had Eivor dig through poop for a brooch so far? We freed a kid who is being contained by his mom for picking his nose? We met Robin Hood, and... We just... Unleashed smell hell upon the citizens of London from their magical Rick and Morty Sheshwan sauce. There better be something good. There better be something good next. Can we fight? No, Kutberg is still a bit above us in terms of levels. That's too powerful. Wessex is too much. Ham. I almost said. I almost said Hamtaro Shire, Hampton Shire. We still have Oxenfordshire. There's this. I don't know what that mission is, so we're gonna go do that. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so E3. Oh, I watched two. Call it two new movies recently. And it was Raya the Last Dragon from Disney and Mitchells vs. the Machines from Sony. And I enjoyed both. I, I did enjoy both, but here's hear me out. Raya really... Raya and the Last Dragon had so much potential. It had so much potential. I'm expecting over the coming years... For there to be a Emperor's New Groove amount of what happened with this movie's production that that movie had. Because 
Emperor's New Groove is one of the most well-documented cases of a movie in development hell from Disney that is like a really big head scratcher of what would have happened if we had the original movie, which was Kingdom of the Sun. We didn't get Kingdom of the Sun. We got Emperor's New Groove. For a few, well, not a few, a lot of reasons. It's a very complicated story and people have done documentaries of this stuff. Like actual, like, Disney movie documentary kind of stuff about it. And... Yeah, I'm feeling that this movie possibly might have... What is this thing? I keep seeing this wisp. No, 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 no. Don't run away. I'm following you. Following the wisp. If I can. I think it's too fast. I think the wisp is too fast. I think I lost track of it. It showed a signal that I could grab it for like a minor second that I didn't take the take advantage of because I didn't realize it until it was too late. Anyway, let's go to this mission then. Wait, which one are we going to? That one. There's one that's still active that I do not want. That one. So anyway, let me cut the fat. So Ride the Last Dragon visually was great. It looked fantastic. The characters were part of the problem. So Raya herself is not a great protagonist. She's... It has nothing to do with her stoic nature or any of that that she as a character has. It's kind of how I guess she got to be like that. That's really generic and underwhelming. It's like, oh yeah, you, uh, you saw your dad kind of die and you were thrown into an apocalyptic world whoopee how original so to me that wasn't very interesting the most interesting character was the big warrior man whose baby died and was really charismatic and funny and interesting and had some quips and he had what Three paragraphs? Three paragraphs of dialogue in like a span of five minutes and then they're like, oh no, we need to get on to the next part. We that was the problem with Ryan the Last Dragon. Is that they shoved what should have been like a 13 episode TV season into a two hour movie and expected everything to be explained and run smoothly. Because 70% of this film is backstory segments to why things are the way they are in the movie in the current like in the present day of the movie most of the movie is about explaining why things are in the movie the way they are and that is a horrible situation for a movie to be in uh it's a mess it's a mess um where do i if if i i'm uh, I can speak. It's just there's so many mixed emotions I have about this movie because I see the potential. I can see the potential. And it trips over itself and it trips over itself and it trips over itself and it can't get up and it can't get up and it just keeps trying to push this narrative. But it keeps explaining why it has to do this as a movie. Like why the characters need to feel the way they do and such instead of just letting things happen. It's not written like a novel. It's not written like a normal movie. It's written like 10 episodes of a TV show crammed and cut, spliced in between each other to try and fit as much in in two hours. And it hurts. It hurts because I see what they could have done with this idea and they botched it. The only two things I could see, if, if in they tried to expand it as a movie, like if they wanted to keep the movie format and not do a TV season at all, and it would have worked perfectly as a TV season, they should have done two movies. They should have just done two movies. If Warner Brothers can give Peter Jackson three movies to do The Hobbit, and it was way over the top and very unnecessary... And very fluff and very questionable quality especially by the last movie Disney can give these guys two movies to do their story they didn't 
and it hurts because it's like i i want to like these characters but they don't explain themselves enough for me to care about them there's no reason for me to care about raya it's like oh yeah her whole character is her dad's died kind of died and uh she's trying to save her whole character is i need to save the world i need to save to save the dragons and uh the dude whose baby kind of died and he's a funny kind of gruff all he's like a mix of uh he has a kind of what's a good way to explain this guy he reminds me of one of the bad guys from tangled like one of those guys at the bar that they visit he reminds me he has that kind of energy where it's kind of like menacing but really funny and he's cool and he ha he's, he has the most deep kind of subtle backstory that's implied through like two quiet scenes and then it just brushed off and it's like okay let's let's bring this guy with us he's with us and uh the kid with the boat is could have been interesting he could have had some real character instead he's just like that kid that everybody knows that is trying to be like the top macho man kid like a lot of uh six to eight year old kid uh like little kids try to be they try to be like oh look at me i'm the cool kid i'm the i'm the hot stuff on the block I, it's that kind of attitude and i i even as a kid i knew other kids who were trying to do that and it didn't come off as interesting because that was his entire character was that and it didn't go anywhere it was just that and then you had the little toddler baby, the little baby with the monkeys. Yes, there is a baby that is weird with monkeys. Like, she, she's like some uh, ninja baby with little monkeys. And it's an interesting topic. Again, it's an interesting idea. You got the, this weird, like, kung fu, martial arts, whatever, little baby with these mischievous monkeys and such. And they are just for a very brief town moment one one chase scene they get one chase scene and that was their little bit of fame and that's that's really how the th this movie's pacing is extremely horrible and it ruins the film uh, i still give the movie a c because i see the potential i like the animation the characters could have been interesting they could have been but they weren't and i'm coming off watching things like frozen and moana and frozen 2 and these more recent disney movies because i wanted to refresh myself as well as watching like black cauldron recently and a few other older stuff but uh yeah it just it's just a really disappointing movie because i see what they could have done i see what they could have done and they didn't do anything with it they just threw out a movie half-baked and uh Wanted to make some money off it. And that's all I see in that. So, uh... That, that's my that's my piece on Raya and the Last Dragon. I, I expected it to be bland. And, um... It kind of was. It, it sadly kind of was. I wanted to... I wanted to hope that it was something original and interesting. And I see what Disney... That the what I see what the writers wanted to do. It's it's like trying to shove. Uh, it's like trying to shove this video game with all the lore and the characters and the story and all the the world and what's going on. It's like trying to shove that into a like movie. It really is, and it just ruins everything. Now, Mitchells vs. the Machines, I watched directly after it. Now, that was, a, that was one of Sony's newest movies of this year. And it was done by some of the team that did, like, Gravity Falls. And I believe some of the guys who did Spider-Verse. I know one of the scenes was actually ripped from Spider-Verse and reused. Uh, because it was easy to animate that and just throw it in there and most people didn't notice it Which was good because it wasn't supposed to be noticeable because it was they were basically they basically for like a very like two second scene while they're going to different places Ripped the one of the New York City scenes and called it Tokyo and that was it <laughs> But Yeah, Mitchell's vs. the Machines was very well written there were a few cringy moments because it's about this modern teenager girl trying to go to college, but her dad is trying to relate to her. It's kind of like Goofy Movie, and there's a few Goofy Movie things that are like, you guys trying to copy Goofy Movie? Because that car 
That car you characters have looks exactly the same as the one in Goofy Movie. Maxie, who'd you give the car to? You need your focus, son. You don't just give out, you don't give out your dad's car to anyone who asks for it. Anyway, yeah, so it's about a cell phone that's trying to take over the world. Haha, <laughs> original story, I guess. But uh, it was actually extremely well executed. I give big props to those guys from Gravity Falls and Spider-Verse. They, they nailed it. It was a solid movie for such a really basic and dumb plot. It was, the characters were good. Characters were heartfelt. Characters were interesting. Some of the weird haha <laughs> funny moments were kind of lame kind of lame because like the teenage girl's like into photoshop and wants to be going to an art school and she's all like individualistic and artsy and such and that's her character and i don't care much for her even though she's the main character she's kind of just like i know people like that and it's just a uh, kind of a uh awkward okay uh I know plenty of people who are like you, who failed in their endeavors, and you need to grow up and understand that you can't just do that. <laughs> Sorry to be a downer. Sorry to be a downer, but... And, and that's kind of that's why I kind of sided with the dad a bit in the movie as well, because he was like that. He was like, you, you need to have uh, more realistic expectations of life and such, and... Yeah... She she got she got all pissy and like you don't understand anything, Dad. And it's like, come on, come on, are we really gonna do this trope? But overall, I want to just sell you on this movie on one thing alone, and then I'm done rambling and I'll get back to the game because I don't even know where I am or what I'm doing anymore because I was looking for some extra mission, which is right there. I've been running around this pond. It's over there. They go to a mall. First off, they get two robot friends who become the sons of her mom because reasons that I won't explain. Just watch the movie. And they're they're two of the funniest characters in the movie by far. I'm sorry, Cranes. I keep scaring you. But uh, they go to a mall. And uh, I couldn't believe what I saw. I could not believe what I saw. Furbies. Furbies everywhere. On the rafters of the overhead Passover. In the kiosks, amongst the dishwashers and toilets, they rose. The Furbies have come. Yeah, there's an entire mall scene. They, they go to a mall to do some stuff for the plot and there's furbies and the furbies are all weapons like this is this isn't like bootleg furbies this is real like they got the branding for furbies to do this and it is one of the most beautiful animated scenes i think i've ever seen and i couldn't believe what i was watching oh come on it's one of these glitch things with like yeah pass not doing that today so this is pointless is there another quest there is in East Anglia whatever that is that looks like another rock formation that looks interesting so yeah they got the branding for Furbies they made a Furby horror chase scene that was brilliant and then at the climax of that you think it's fine but then one of them summons their great master and it's how tall was this thing it's about three story about a three story tall furby that may as well have been a kaiju and they have to kill it when they do kill it I lost it because <laughs> it, it literally kind of said what I said earlier about I I was born from the darkness 
and now I return to its cold warmth, <laughs> or something like that. It was ridiculous. God, I can't believe that was in that movie. How does one miss the hay? How does one miss the leaf pile, Eivor? You were that close. You were a foot away. I rarely miss leaf piles or hay piles in these games. What was that? I don't know. I don't know why Eivor missed that. All I do know is Furbies are demons and must be slain. They are the Crusaders of Darkness. Furbies, the Dark Prophets of Toys. All right, so let us see what this last adventure holds for us. This will be the last side mission. And will I return to this game anytime soon? I have no idea. I really don't. I'm just playing this right now to have some fun and chill out after work in a very stressful day. So, uh, we'll see. We shall see. Okay, this is something. How deep does this go? Is this the cave that Gandalf fights the Balrog of Morgoth in? No, it's a hay pile. There's nothing immediately evil in here. Grimes Graves. Isn't Grimes like that pop singer or something? Is this where Billy Elish lives? Billy Eyelash? Is Lord the Lord of this domain? I'm just naming off like pop musician, R&B, whatever, rap artist that I don't know anymore. <laughs> okay, there's some metal. Like, materials is useful, but what else is here? Is this just like some sort of empty facility? Not even a baddie. No baddies here. Only goodies and dust. What is it? This is a mine. This actually is a mine. Welcome. To the mines of Moria. Troll cursed. Troll what? There are no orcs here. Eivor? I was making a joke earlier about us entering Moria with the Balrog cave and such. Whoa, 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 what sees me? <gasps> Snakes! Flashback to me a month, about a month ago when I walked through a field of snakes. In real life. Snake down! Uh, what do we got? There's a key. Where? Okay, so I'm on a bridge. I can't see crap in here. It's funny because I can. I'm looking at OBS and I see a little bit better on OBS than what I'm seeing on my TV because my TV. 
It has a bit more of some dynamic lighting stuff going on than the computer. What in the shit is this thing? Oh, it's a curse. I forgot about these things. That's better. I forgot there were these, like, cult curse things, which apparently... There's gonna be cult DLC as well for this game later. So... That'll be interesting. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Ubisoft is actually, like, doing decent updates and DLC and such for this game. It's interesting DLC. It's Paris under attack? And cultist crap. That is impressive. It's weird. I like the weird DLC. It's why I like Blood and Wine and Hearts of Stone. It's very weird stuff. Okay. What else is there? Oh yeah, the key's still in there. Can I grab the key? Why is there no key? There's no key on the table. Okay. Do I need to put the key there? I don't think so. I think it's a bug. I'm just gonna leave. Oh, lovely. What is this? The white hilt of the sword of Radek Hell. Alone I rot in inky black, the end of a shadow maze. In the hands of one born well, I blaze with boundless flame. That's a cute little poem. Okay, there's something at the end of this. What is this place? Uh, wizardry. We got an opal. Really, we just got a skill point for being here. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know why, but okay. Whatever. Secret found. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Through the mountain. Secret tunnel. Don't let your feelings get you down. Don't let your... Don't let the darkness of the cave... Turn your smile into a frown. I'm skipping lyrics and making lyrics up now. Don't let the cave and get you down, Sokka. Alright, so now we're done there. Look at that nice castle in the distance. Is that a person? No, oh, it's a tree. I thought it was like a person with arms outstretched like an eagle. Just like, basking in the fields. I didn't know why that was that. Look at that low frame rate bird population around the top of that tower. Mmm. You can taste the frames. I mean, it works. You're not supposed to look too close at things. If you do, the magic starts to wear away. Is it just me, or as I'm running past that tree right there, you can see it spinning? What's up with that? Do you... 
I, I feel like no, I'm not seeing things. I'm seeing that tree right there spin with Eivor as he walks around it. Oh, uh, what now? What was it? Beavers? Did beavers want to eat Eivor or something? Alright, is there maybe one more thing? There is one more thing. It's whatever that is. We'll go see what that is. And I'll upgrade Eivor right now. And, uh, skills. See if there's anything interesting out of this. What's this? I can't do anything with that yet. What is this? Missile re mm. Yes. Oh, I can't get it yet. What? Yes. I want to catch a javelin and throw it back at them like the Matrix. Oh, man. That's a tease. I thought if I got this, then I could just get that. That's a tease. Fine. Fine. We will get it eventually. I want reversal javelin throw ability. Okay, yeah, so we're heading over here. For something, I have no idea what this thing is over here. It looks like a fortress of some type. Mm, actually, it's past this. over here. Also, I I expect a visual upgrade between this this part and the last part from December because the last part was on my old capture card and it looks kind of crusty and this look should look a lot better. This should capture the game in its full PS4 quality. Well, it will do that. So, this is nothing. It's over here. Is it another cult thing? I think it is. Smells of burnt peat. Okay. Um, I'm gonna save. I think this is a duel. If I can save. There we go. Okay. I think this is a duel. These are uncommon. They're almost as uncommon as they are in Sekiro from my experience, where they're just kind of random and pretty brutal. Hey, dude. That's a great. What's your deal? What battle spit you out? The guilty have come for spoils. Oh boy, hallucinogenics. You return again to mock our family to make light of my father's sacrifice. <coughs> Mad seer, you have no fight with me. Which of the traitor kings sent you? Was it Edmund? Burgred? Allah? I follow the orders of no king, nor will I bow to you. Okay, I hope this person isn't too difficult. Here we go. <laughs> I like, I like how I went most of this, most of this part without fighting, and then I end it with a fight, like a possibly really difficult fight. Ah, uh, I jinxed myself. Stay back.
I'm also, I'm also not aware if there's supposed to be music playing right now or anything, because I've noticed that there hasn't really been any music the whole time I've played today. Perry didn't work there. Quick strikes. Quick strikes are how to do this. But I like my eyes. Run away. Oh, 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 tricky. Tricky. Gotcha. In a combo. Oh, what are you doing? Ah, oh, cheating. Cheating. I say as I did a combo, now you land a combo. Yeah, it's like my dodging and parries don't work anymore. Man, this second phase is brutal. I am losing. I can't stand in that stuff. What is even happening here? Why didn't that hit you? This ain't good. This ain't good. Nope, I'm dead. Yep, I'm dead. What what has your poison done? As he says as he's dead. Alright, let's give that another shot. I now know what they're capable of. And now uh, let's give it another go. Went out to the beach a few days ago, and uh, it's nice weather out. It's very nice. Found a tree that looks like it had been burned from the inside, I guess. I thought it was struck by lightning, but I think it was burned from the inside, some sort of controlled burn or something. I don't know. It was a big tree. It was burned. And uh, as I walked back to the beach, I saw this uh, guy, this big guy, just for no reason pick up a log that was kind of in the water on the coast and just throw it and then he kept going on his way with his walking stick I don't know what his deal was a man who throws logs what battle spit you out well, no 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 I don't want to go to the title screen Well, I can't skip the cutscene again. 
opportunity not enough. You return again to mock our family. To make light of my father's sacrifice. <coughs> Mad Seer, you have no fight with me. Which of the traitor kings sent you? Was it Edmund? Borgred? Allah? I follow the orders of no king, nor will I bow to you. You dare intrude? You will be skinned like the others! I will tear you apart! What Seder makes you multiply? I am one and many. How do I block this fool? A lucky strike. Like it doesn't work. Second time, three times? And it barely did anything and I almost died. Okay, phase two. Come on. That shield on my back should have protected me there. I'm kind of glad there's not like bom bombastic boss battle music here, so I can try and listen to her and defend myself. But this is this is tight. This is close. Again. At least that combo doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Wait, where are you? Oh, lovely. I didn't expect to kill her with an arrow, but sure. At least it's done. And I got two skill points. Is there any treasure? No treasure? Oh. Okay. Eh, there's a few little things. Sure, I'll take those. It was a good fight. It was a little, uh, annoying how I died once, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, 
I think that's... I think that's about it for me today. Now I can go rest my voice and return... ...to the ether from whence I came. Make a sandwich. Make a sandwich. Make a good sandwich. A good sandwich is forever a good sandwich. There's my words of wisdom. Not that dude who showed me his house earlier. Those are my words of wisdom. A good sandwich is a good sandwich. Okay, I'm just gonna draw myself up here. Uh, Lincolnshire is too difficult. Leicestershire. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this area is kind of like the new hotness of missions and weirdness. There's some stuff I can still do here in Skidopshire. Let's go back to pretty much where we started, I guess. So, if you've enjoyed this and the Pokemon Stadium 2 part I did last time that I recorded and put up now because I've been procrastinating on it, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> Including the Pokemon card bit at the end there, which, eh, I just kind of did that for fun. I actually did that before I even did the Pokemon Stadium 2 part. So that, I think, was like late May or maybe a few days into June. I have no idea anymore. But, uh, that was fun. Those cards were nice. And, uh, yeah, we'll see... We'll see what happens next. What, what I'll play next. What, what goes on, I have no idea. So thanks for watching, and see you next time. Have a good night. Light the fires of Gondor to alert and gain help from Rohan. Yeah, it's the Twin Peaks from Breath of the Wild. Cool.